Do you ever get angry at your kids? Good, then I'm not alone. <laughs> and so does Melanie. Let me read you an email from her. She wrote, Dear Avital, thank you so much for all that you do. Your work has changed our family life forever. I'm wondering about feeling angry. I know that we're not supposed to yell at our kids, but do you think it's okay to say, you're making me so mad, or I'm so mad at you? If not, why not? I think authenticity is incredibly important and I think not saying I'm mad when I am or pretending I'm not is like silencing myself and suppressing my feelings. That can't be a good model for my kids, can it? Isn't feeling angry just a human emotion that children need to witness as well? Looking forward to hearing your perspective on this, Melanie. Welcome to the Parenting Junkie Show. I'm Abital, and this is the place to be to love parenting and parent from love. Today, we're talking about managing our adult tantrums, and whether our anger is justified and what to do about it. Here's my thinking on this, and I invite you to watch my video all about anger. But basically, I think that anger is a natural thing that all of us are gonna feel from time to time. And depending on your temperament and how you were raised, your body and your words are gonna come out differently when you're angry. And it might be something that you really struggle with like I do. I really struggle with a temper and with reactive, angry emotions. Anger is a natural feeling and you do have the right to feel your feelings. Your feelings are justified. It is okay for you to be angry and beating yourself up about it or feeling guilty about it certainly won't help. But let's differentiate between what you feel and how you behave. If we feel angry, that's okay and justified. However, acting out our anger, unleashing it on someone else, vomiting whatever we have inside us when we're angry on our children, not okay. The same goes for children as well, right? We wanna teach our children that it's okay for them to be mad or sad or jealous, but it's not okay for them to hit or grab or yell at someone. The other thing to know about feelings is that we have to take responsibility for them. Other people don't make us angry. And we don't get mad at other people. We get mad within ourselves. There was an external trigger for it. Something stimulated our anger. But it's our own interpretation of that external situation that made us angry. However, the fact that we're feeling angry and that we get angry doesn't give us license to blame or shame someone else's behavior. You can disagree with your children's behavior. You can think that they need guidance or consequences or a lot of teaching around what they've done, that it wasn't okay. But they are still not responsible for your emotional reaction. So no, we wanna try and shy away from telling our children that they made us mad or that we're mad at them. We need to start taking responsibility for our feelings and saying, I'm feeling very angry right now is very different from saying, you're making me very angry. It might sound like just a semantical difference, but I think it's actually quite a essential difference in how we're treating the other person and what we're putting on them versus what we're putting on ourselves. Anger is a growth opportunity. Anger is that moment that we can step into being the peaceful person that we want to be. It's very easy on the yoga mat or in meditation or when you're on a retreat. It's very hard and very meaningful when we can rise above and become peaceful in a moment of being triggered. When our prefrontal cortex is actually offline and our body is actually being driven by our reptilian brains, by a reactive brain, right? That's when we want to rise above. The moment that anger wants us to get really, really loud is the moment that we get really quiet. It's in the resistance to the tyranny of anger that we can grow into the peaceful people that we want to be. It's in distancing ourselves from the anger and realizing that it's not true to say, I am angry. It's not that I am anger. We don't allow it to become us. We in fact differentiate from it and realize, oh, this is anger trying to control me. This is anger trying to give me a message. 
So how about we allow ourselves to become the recipient of anger's message, but not the messenger for anger? In other words, we allow anger to speak to us, but not for us. When we allow anger to speak to us, we listen and we say, huh, why did anger come to visit just at that moment? What boundaries were being crossed? What story was I telling myself? How was I allowing for myself to be treated in a way that I don't want to be treated? How was I disrespecting myself and trespassing over my own limits and boundaries? That's listening for anger and understanding and drawing important conclusions for the future. Have you ever found yourself in the throes of anger? Do you find managing your temper a challenge? If so, I would love to hear. Let me know at theparentingjunkie.com forward slash blog, just in the comment section there. Let's have a conversation around the role of anger in parenting and what it feels like for you. So if you find yourself in that very moment that anger has come to visit, you're super triggered, you're so angry, you want to hurt someone, your children probably, and you want to hurt them bad. You want to yell at them. You want to tell them how bad they are. You want to cause them pain. You want to unleash your anger. What can you do in that moment? How can you calm yourself down? How can you stop yourself from releasing that venom, that poison, that vomit onto someone else? Here are some ideas. The first step is that we have to stop ourselves somehow. And Dr. Laura Markham recognizes this as her first step in her stop, drop and breathe sequence. And I'll link to the video about that below. But the first step of stopping ourselves, right? We wanna gag ourselves, we wanna hold back our arms, we wanna kind of be a limitation for ourselves. My three-year-old son once said to me, I really wanted to hit, but my skin stopped me. And it was such a great analogy of having your skin actually pull you back. He actually succeeded in self-regulating, regulating his emotions so that he wasn't unleashing them on his baby brother. He, his skin was stopping him. How can you help your skin to stop you? In that very moment, you can redirect your anger. And rather than saying words that are hurtful and toxic and that you can't take back later, how about you say something that doesn't make any sense whatsoever? Just yelling or making noises that express that energy without saying something hurtful. How about you excuse yourself? You pull yourself back and you say, I need a break. Or you say, I'm too upset right now, I need to go and calm down. Please go and play in the playroom until I'm calm. I need a few minutes to myself and we will talk about this later. This isn't your fault, but I can't handle this right now. I need to calm down. I'll see you soon. If you have another adult at home or even an older child, you can ask them for help. You can say, I really need a break. Can you guys play together? I need to go calm down. Try to inhibit yourself the way you would if you had guests over or if you were being on camera or if you were being watched by strangers in the street. Is this about suppressing your emotions? Not at all. It's about listening to them, but not acting on them. You're allowed to feel angry. Remember, you're not allowed to unleash toxicity on other people, right? And I do too. I do it the whole time. So let's give ourselves compassion for that because of course there is always repair and there's always apologizing. Step number two is to wait for the feelings to pass. And this is very hard if you are a hurricane like me. Harville Hendricks talks about hurricanes and turtles. Hurricanes, when they're angry, they blow really big and really loud and they sweep everybody up around them in that tantrum that they're having, right? Turtles retreat to their shells and they actually close off and ignore and stonewall and gaslight and do all sorts of behaviors that stop other people from allowing any kind of engagement or penetration into their emotions. So if you are a turtle, this is a good phase for you. You wanna retreat from the anger and you want to wait it out. But if you're a hurricane, this is very challenging. This is the place where we actually don't act on our feelings. We don't say what we wanted to say. Instead, we wait. Now, what can you do during this incubation period? Well, you can express your anger in a healthy way through art, through journaling, through dance. 
Let it out, definitely, just not on your children, hey? And not on yourself. Let it out by talking to a friend or a therapist, calling your spouse, writing it down. Do something to let it out, but don't let it out on your children. Now, if you're stuck with your children and you can't leave them alone because they're little, then change up the atmosphere. Go watch a movie, go on a walk, get outside, go upside down. Literally changing perspective and changing atmosphere is going to really, really help you to let your emotions move through you. Now, what you need to realize is that all emotions pass. All emotions are transient. So the fact that it feels like you have to act on it now, that's just the urgency of that triggered state. But it's not true and you don't have to listen to it. You can say to yourself, yes, this is important. And no, I won't let it go. But I'm only going to talk about it when I'm calm, right? When I'm calm, I'll be able to choose my words wisely and I'll be so much more effective. Sometimes we think that parenting is like dog training that if your dog pees on your couch, you immediately have to respond or they'll never learn. You can't sit the dog down for a conversation two hours later when you're calm and say, you know what, that peeing on the couch really has to stop. I don't like that, right? But with children, you can. It's really a wonderful thing. Furthermore, if you are angry when you respond, you're not gonna respond effectively. Your children are gonna get defensive, scared, and their brains will shut down and they'll go into survival mode and they won't hear you anyway. It's simply not a teachable moment. It's well worth the wait. And finally, you get to express yourself. Number three is express. Express what was making you angry, but not about saying, I'm so angry and you made me mad and it's your fault and you're not okay, but saying, you know, I got really upset when I saw this and this happen and here's why, here's what I feel about it. It's about getting close and cuddling and feeling calm and having a bit of a, a, bit of a laugh. It's about holding your child's goodness to light and saying, I know that you're such a good kid and I know that you don't mean any harm by this, but this didn't feel quite right to me. Can we have a conversation about that? Let's talk about it. And it's about listening to their side and understanding that we may have missed an entire perspective. In fact, by definition, we missed an entire perspective on what happened. So we want to express ourselves in a mindful way through nonviolent communication and real connection and at a time and place and in a way that feels good, close and connected with our child. This would also be the time to apologize because probably if you got really triggered and angry, you made a violent face or you hurt your child or you said something that you do regret. And this is the time to take responsibility for our behavior, saying that wasn't okay and I'm sorry. I'm really sorry for losing my call with you and yelling at you and I do not mean what I said. It was not okay what I said. And I'm gonna work very hard to teach myself to calm down when I'm angry and to speak respectfully. That sense of pride when you've managed to navigate a situation that used to trigger you and today for some reason you managed to rally your resources and navigate it peacefully, that sense of pride is growth. That's where we become really the peaceful people we want to be, the peaceful ninjas we are. And that's what our children deserve too. They deserve to see a model of leadership that takes responsibility for emotional outbursts and for bad behavior, that takes responsibility and that takes action in trying to make changes and really reform. So if we bring in remorse and we bring in reform and show our children, we're taking that two-pronged approach to our anger problems, then I think that we're doing the very best that we can. If this spoke to you, I would love for you to tag me over on Instagram at Parenting Junkie. You can also slap the like button on this video and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss any future episodes. And I'd love to hear from you how anger plays a part in your parenting over on the blog. Meanwhile, you can dive deeper into this topic at the Parenting Junkie Show podcast, anywhere you get your podcast, and share this episode out with anyone you think might find it helpful. You just grab the link and send them an email or a text message. Keep on loving parenting and parenting from.